you won't believe what it takes to manage a restaurant on board cruise ships. It's more than just serving meals and managing staff. Greg Pendock today is going to share his journey as well as you know how he got about to being on cruise ships and trust me it's a path filled with valuable lessons first of all welcome back to my channel my name is Wandi Sambane and today we have a special guest Mr. Greg himself and today he's going to be sharing incredible insight into what it's like to managing a restaurant on board cruise ships the daily challenges as well as how you can follow in his footsteps to land a similar role. Now, if you are looking to work in the food and beverage department on a cruise ship, that's exactly what Mr. Craig is going to be sharing his journey in how you can follow in his footsteps and then to understand what it takes to advance in his industry. So stay tuned because you're going to get actionable tips as well as advice straight from someone who's been there. Now, before we get into the tips, could you, first of all, tell the viewers who you are and how long you've been working in the cruise industry? Good evening, Wendy. Great to be here. My name is Greg Pendock. I am the current restaurant manager on board Scenic Eclipse 2. I am born and raised in Cape Town, South Africa, and I'm here today to share my story, my journey, and some valuable tips and tricks along the way that could help you land your dream job. So Mr. Craig, could you tell us a little bit about what got you interested to work on cruise ships, particularly in the food and beverage department? I would say one day my mother's cooking, food has always been a part of my family's culture and it has always been the driving force that got us together. It was celebratory and I found myself always interested in the dynamic of how can we create better food to enjoy these celebrations more? And so my interest then got me into hospitality itself where I took a lightning to food and beverage. Uh, there was something about it that fed my soul and it fed the soul of the family and I wanted more and I wanted to know more. And so I aligned myself with the chefs, I aligned myself with the restaurant and I aligned myself with the bar team to try and understand more of how that department itself runs as I felt like it was the heart, the heart and soul of any big hotel or cruise ship itself. Mm. Wow, that is an incredible story and I love the fact that you know you mentioned your mother because mothers mold us into being who we are. 100%. Absolutely. So now could you maybe walk us through what a typical day would look like on a cruise ship? Absolutely. So the day always starts super early in the morning um, with hospitality. It always runs all day long. Um, I would say time management uh, is always uh, the utmost importance uh, along with grooming, you know, so you can't start the day off until you are dressed and presented as if you are about to have the most successful day. So it's always uh, my first importance of the day is making sure that I'm dressed and look in million dollars mm -hmm. so that I walk out of that door and I know that no matter what the challenges are that I'm ready for it just based on my personal presentation. Right. Thereafter it's making sure that I have outlets opening and operating with a set of standards that I would expect at the highest level and making sure that it's consistently done like that every single morning. So my day is really about making sure that I'm dressed appropriately and presented in the best way and that my restaurants are presented in the best way. The first impression is the last impression for the rest of that day. So I wanna make sure that regardless of which outlet I walk into, that every single step has been taken to make sure that it is presented and showcasing itself in the best way. Wow, thank you. Those are some um, incredible tips to start off with. Now guys, um, our religion here, this is how we do things. First of all, if you've just joined, um, tell us where you're watching from. Mention down in the comments that way I can get to understand you so I can tailor make our future content. Now, if you do have any questions, please leave them also in the comments. Mr. Greg will do his best to answer those questions. I'm sure in his busy schedule, as he's just said, he's going to find some time to do exactly that. Of course, absolutely. absolutely. Thank you for that. So now, could you please tell us about some of the challenges that you face on a daily basis 
and how specifically you overcome those challenges? Um, one day I think the challenges can vary every single day. Uh, within the hospitality industry, there is no single day that will always be the same. Every single day you will face a new challenge and it's about the flexibility of having some experience and knowing what to do in those situations. So various challenges do arise, but I would say for me, the most important part as a restaurant manager is making sure that I'm taking care of my team. Um, and there is a lot of possibilities of issues that may arise on a daily basis. Um, and it's about emotional intelligence and being aware, thoughtfulness and understanding of what your team may be going through. Um, that for me is of my utmost importance because in order for my team to take care of the guests I need to take care of them mm. and mm. so it's about being aware of their surroundings understanding the challenges that they may be facing within the guests and offering the best possible support that I can give them in order for them to be able to successfully do their job so I would say there will be many more challenges that each individual will face regardless of the cruise ship that you work on mm. it's about having the right mentality to be thoughtful and understanding and that goes a long way in getting people's loyalty and allowing your team to feel supported and guided throughout their journey. You know, <clears throat> Greg, I was just listening to what you were saying and one thing um, struck out for me and you mentioned emotional intelligence. Now for those that do not know what emotional intelligence means, could you maybe just expand a little bit on that because I think it's a very important you know, um, topic that we can discuss and share with our viewers. Absolutely, it's definitely something that I've had to learn myself over the years. Um, I think people don't take it as seriously as what I think it actually requires. And emotional intelligence boils down to the idea of being able to put yourself in one's shoes, mm. um, understanding the various factors that may be affecting that person and the actions that they may be doing is always a result or a reaction based on something else that's happened mm. and mm. so it's about mm. trying to be mindful and thoughtfulness of the surroundings their personal family lives the team in which they're working with and trying to offer the right solution uh, within that moment that could offer them some relief or some support in order for them to feel the the support of a manager you know and of a leader mm. i think that is what it boils down to within our industry within food and beverage itself it's uh, there will be a lot of external factors that go on but mm. uh, the right leader will be able to identify key indicators that will showcase where their team members mentality is at and what they can do in that moment to assist them and support them wow thank you i hope guys that you are taking notes <laughs> and in order for me to see that you are serious in taking notes, mention anything that resonates with you and just drop it in the comments. That way we could be able to, of course, engage with one another. Now, Mr. Greg, could you please, you know, take us through. I know that there are many people out there that are either currently working as waiters or they are thinking of working as waiters. Now, can you tell us, you know, um, what it is? that took you you know to get to where you are because of course we have to start somewhere there are entry level positions available on the cruise ships and one of them is waiters which you deal with in your department yeah so i definitely started my journey at the bottom of the ladder of food and beverage and that would be to some companies a service utility uh, to others it could be a junior waiter uh, it could be a waiter that you're starting out as, but I started as an assistant waiter and I completed two contracts within that role. Um, and I thought it was completely vital because in order to understand an operation and any organization, you have to understand the foundation blocks of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that regardless of your age or the amount of experience that you have doing any role, whichever organization you start with, you always want to understand the foundation blocks in order to build on them. So I started as that role and I believe that from there, I helped myself in understanding basics and thereon questioned what could I learn next? 
Mm. Once I'd achieved those goals, I then utilized that to continue to build on them because every single one of those foundation blocks are still essential even in my daily life today. Mm -hmm. I still need to know those and I still require them. However, I've now taken those techniques a step further and a step further and a step further. And what that has allowed me to do is take each opportunity of a new job role, take the same foundation blocks with me and continue to build on them. And so I did my time as a assistant waiter and then I moved on to a waiter. Uh, that opportunity as a waiter then gave me more opportunities to experience more exposure with guests and that built further foundation blocks. Mm. And so I learned how to be more uh, welcoming and, and wholehearted with guests and that was then allowing me to find ways of how can I teach others to do that and mm. that started to showcase some sort of leadership qualities. Mm. And those leadership qualities were acknowledged by others who were above me. Mm. And that then allowed me the opportunity to get a system HUD which then counts as a restaurant supervisor for other companies or a restaurant manager for some. Um, and so I utilize that opportunity to then say my skill set now requires me to understand what is it that a leader does. And you know, I was the starting point of being a, a junior leader in my mind, you know, and there were many types of leaders that I was going to be exposed to throughout my years of working as an assistant HOD and I had to kind of figure out which path I wanted to take and, and what leadership style I resonated with, what, what felt most comfortable to me and what I found was that I was gonna make a lot of mistakes and I was gonna bump my head along the way and there was gonna be certain qualities that I would need to learn throughout experience. Um, you can't learn that necessarily from a, a book and you're not gonna get it from any journal online. That, that's an experience <coughs> that you have to have in person um, but I was finally given the opportunity to utilize all of these skills and I got given the opportunity as a restaurant manager in charge of nine different restaurants on board and with an extremely large, dedicated, diverse workforce, which is where I am today. And now I'm utilizing all of those foundation blocks along the way and hopefully that will then lead to the next role, whenever that may be. Wow, um, that is such an inspiring you know journey especially to many people out there that are still looking you know to follow in your footsteps like I've said I think in my humble opinion you have given us um, a breakdown of what it could take when you are dedicated when you know um, you are persistent and most of it all when you have goals that you have set for yourself and it's very clear to you um, from what you've just shared today that um, you clearly had goals because you wouldn't be where you are today without any direction because I think goals give birth you know um, to the direction or path that we're going to follow without them we would simply be sailing without any navigation in the seas leading to nowhere. You have to have purpose I think Wendy you've got to know what it is that you want to bring to any organization there's something unique that is in all of us uh, and that's that's useful, that is useful, yeah. and it is purposeful, but you've got to make sure that those goals and objectives align with who you are, and you want to bring that to an organization that inspires that to be continued on, and to be implemented, and to be grown in a way where the company is benefiting while you're growing. Yeah. That is the perfect harmony of understanding goals and objectives of your own personal life, but also what you can bring to assist an organization to grow simultaneously. Mm. Um, you want that to be the same direct path that we're all on together. You know, that is heartfelt what you've just shared um, with us, the viewers. I think I'm learning as I'm <laughs> sitting right here with you. And I believe that uh, you guys at home are also learning or wherever you are, maybe you're busy going to work or you are um, you know, en route to wherever your destination might take you. But there's something that I really want to really understand here, um, Greg, that I think you can share with our viewers today. What are some of the key skills or qualities that you think, since you are someone that has been on the path, can set someone aside, especially if they are in a similar role, you know, working towards a managerial role? Now, this does not have 
to be just in food and beverage. Mm -hmm. Remember, we are talking about cruise ships in general, but mm -hmm. using your experience in food and beverage department and what you have learned, what do you think are those you know, key qualities and skills that someone can implement and sort of practice? I think there is definitely a dedication to the goal that you set for yourself. So we we're just talking about the goals. Mm. Um, in order to achieve those, you have to set smaller, realistic, achievable goals that can be achieved in a shorter time frame. Mm. I think that instant gratification and reward always inspires confidence. Um, and so by setting these small achievable goals, throughout the year um, once you have that kind of readiness and, and, and willingness to, to put dedication into it uh, it will ultimately result in a confident person regardless whether you have all the knowledge on it yet or whether there's still a lot more to grow so dedication I think is the first part flexibility would be the second part uh, on a cruise ship you can be asked at any point in time to work in multiple different outlets in multiple various scenarios with multiple various shifts different timings different locations different weather conditions mm. uh, with different leaders different managers different teams um, flexibility means the humble approach to every new situation with openness and this gives light in saying that there may not always be an agreement or, or a complete understanding of the job role at that time. However, there might be foresight for what it may in turn lead to. And so I, again, I would say flexibility is always the name of the game. Mm. Uh, mm. We see that I think you and I are on a daily basis. Uh, it, it will always be that because like I said, no, no two days are alike. Yes, um, definitely. Patience. Patience, patience, patience. Reminds me of... Uh, <laughs> patience, patience. patience. Yes, <laughs> we are lovely to remember patience. Um, patience is not my strongest virtue. And my hunger and desire to succeed uh, never aligned with the amount of patience that I was willing to give to any opportunity or job role. Um, it also extended to the amount of patience that I was willing to do towards other team members or to other managers. And that wasn't gonna be resolved within a short period of time. And it took me a few years to understand why patience was so important. Um, it will ultimately bring so much wealth in terms of knowledge, in terms of education, if you show restraint in terms of how willing you are and your dedication mm -hmm. when your mm -hmm. understanding of the goal is still there <clears throat> and the job role is still there it's not going to go anywhere you know um, yeah. and so my hunger to succeed was a fire that I thought should not be put out and I don't think it should for anybody however what I think it should be reminded to all that are entering any sort of department was on a cruise ship is that promotions will always be happening job roles come and go um, but if you showcase your work ethic and your work style with a great force of humility and patience it will always be rewarded um, and that way the goals that you set for yourself that you set are small and achievable don't seem too far fetched and you will get them and the reward will be always higher than rushing through the process and trying to take on more than what you are ready for at that time. Mm -hmm. um, so I think be open, be willing, be flexible, be patient, um, and make sure that you showcase yourself in the best possible way at all times. Mm -hmm. Those are just a few of the tips that I have in terms of that. Wow, that is um, a handful. I'm myself, I'm trying to <laughs> you know, wrap my head around what you've yeah. just said. Um, and you know what, I think for anyone that's currently um, just joined us or maybe you're not sure of how we do things here, like I've said, you know, um, previously, the way that we do things here is mention where you are watching us from, drop it in the comments, that way it helps us to understand, you know, into tailor making the content that can help you guys 
also if you have any questions at any time for mr craig right here he's very open and willing to answer you drop it in the comments and i will get him to answer those questions as soon as he can now just to you know go back to the um skills and qualities that we're talking about i want to be a little bit more specific mm -hmm. in terms of now how important are soft skills um things such as effective communication as well as teamwork in making you know um, the industry or your department or role succeed i think there is not one department on board any cruise ship that can be successfully run by one person alone mm -hmm. it does not work in any way open communication starts off with yourself your communicating skills are vital from passing messages to communicating with others the tone the verbiage how you address from emails to conversations to phone calls to in-person contact communication requires a two to three way communication skill set that means I understand you understand and anybody who is intermediary within that message mm -hmm. understands mm -hmm. and so if that means it like i said by an email it means that my tone and verbiage is completely clear to the receiving end and if not a phone call clarifies all of that um, the amount of missed opportunities that arise when communication is not clear always results in a problem that can resolve itself if it was communicated clearly um, that could be necessarily set in an objective for what that email may state, what the phone call intends, or the in-person contact, by making sure that we're using as clear and concise wording and verbiage to minimize confusion. This will always result in team members making it very clear what it is that it is expected, what the message is, and if there's any follow-on questions or further communication that it's easily dealt with. Um, so when you come to teamwork, teamwork is dependent on communication because in order for the full team, whether it be two people, 20 people, 200 people, the same message needs to be spread across. Now, where you may face some difficulty in this, and we see this on a daily basis, and you can consider that to be one of the challenges on board, is with 48 nationalities working on board one cruise ship what is simple and clear and concise to myself um, is very unclear or confusing for somebody of a different nationality um, this could be on a basis of <coughs> english not being someone's first language and more of a second language it could be on a cultural norm it could be the speed at which you speak leading to confusion or leading to not getting the complete message um, and so the expectation then on a teamwork ethic is that every single team member understands the objectives and the goals and so you have to find various different means of how do I communicate with each select crew member to make sure that the same message is passed across to each each crew member and the way that you go around figuring out whether that message was passed correctly and that each crew member understands what was just said is by follow-up questions mm -hmm. ensuring that the message that you've just said was fully understood and that if there's any further clarification that's needed that you then give that so every single day when I wake up I make sure that teamwork is the top of my priority and that I like to understand that restaurant team has clear open communication with the galley, the galley has clear open communication with the restaurant team, that the bar team has clear and open communication. Because at the end of the day, there are various departments that depend on each other in order for us to each have a successful day. Mm -hmm. And so the lines of communication need to stay open at all times. They don't start at one point and end at another. The day starts, the day ends. Those lines stay open throughout the day. And that is the only way that you can truly give 100% of yourself to understand that we're all trying to achieve the same goal here, mm -hmm. which is to make the guests have the best experience possible, mm -hmm. to make sure that your team members are 
enjoying the process and that every message that is passed is clear and concise to everyone. Wow, that is uh, incredible, you know, insights from you, Greg. Apart from me having to know you um, through working uh, with each other, I don't want to be biased, but I can say, you know what, that is some incredible insights that you are busy sharing with the people. And I hope, guys, that you are definitely taking notes because some of the stuff that we are discussing here might just slip through, you know, and you might need to rewatch this video again. But um, if it makes it easier, drop them in the comments so we can see how serious you are. Now, Greg, I know that uh, my next question would be a bit of a little bit personal, but because I really want people to understand what it is that we do, the entire process of getting onto a cruise ship and you know what it really takes as we have covered through your experiences and your journey could you maybe generalize what are some of the salary expectations you know starting from a waiter in an entry-level position and maybe to someone who is in your position you know um south african rands us dollars it doesn't matter so that our viewers can get an idea because i get a lot of questions about what are the salary that we get on board i know like i said it is a personal question but if you can help us to get like a general overview into that it will really help yeah i think what we have to remember is that there's so many different companies that are sailing on the ocean and each company has a completely different protocol and a salary breakdown of how they set up their structures. Um, to generalize it, a waiter role on most cruise ships in, as of 2024, I would say the starting salary could be anything from 1000 USD and could reach a, a high of 3,500 USD on certain companies. Mm. Um, this again depends on a variety of factors and I'm sure we'll touch base on that um, at some point, right. Wendy, but you could have an expectation that as a starting salary, as a waiter who has limited experience or is on the starting end of a cruise ship career, a waiter could expect a salary of anywhere from a thousand US dollars to Roughly 2,500, I would say, would be a really good salary on today's times. And various companies could be a little lower. Some companies may be a little higher, um, but it would all depend on a variety of factors. Um, once you start to increase your role and get further responsibilities and become that of restaurant supervisors or assistant maitre d's, uh, that salary then builds on that as a foundation price. And you can imagine that the salary structure then includes that plus further structure to increase up to roughly approximately four thousand us dollars um, and so it goes on and so and so it increases um, each company again like i said will vary um, but uh, there are a lot of factors that we can influence uh, that will assist us in in getting those job roles mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but at least from the start out point uh, my first salary when I started on the ships was 950 US and for me as a first timer on, on the ships uh, that was a really large number yeah uh, especially <laughs> once you convert that uh, into most currencies <clears throat> uh, especially as a South African myself uh, that was for me a phenomenal first salary and mm -hmm. I would say make that as almost the, the benchmark as what your what your expectations are. Mm -hmm. If you set that as the foundation, uh, anything that you receive higher than that, you can imagine is a bonus uh, and reward for, for the amount of hard work and dedication that you will give. I think you've just shared, um, like I always say, invaluable information here. And I myself, as a South African, depending um, on where you're from, you can always, you know, convert to your currency. I think roughly, I'm not a mad guy, but um, from the top of my head, a salary of about a thousand dollars would come to about, let's say 17, 18,000 in South African rands. Yep. Can you imagine how much 
of you know um, influence that or benefit that can be into your life looking into factors like currently what we are um, experiencing in our own country in South Africa the unemployment rate I mean that's not even you know the minimum wage to start off with that's like already what maybe four or five times than the regular you know minimum wage and bear in mind that you will not be taxed on this salary you know i've mentioned in other videos i share a lot of these tips throughout my content yeah. we don't pay rent we don't pay for food you know in our company we are very fortunate to not pay for internet depending of course on the company that you work for but these are some of the perks that you get you know and starting off with that salary of a thousand rand i mean a thousand dollars going to about 17 18 thousand rand i think you can agree with me that a lot of people you know can really really change you know their lives beginning at that and like you said it could it could go up um depending on of course a lot of factors depending on the company that you're working for and how dedicated you are but i think that's a fair number of amount to begin with you know? i think as as somebody as you said you're living on board rent free mm -hmm. Uh, most of the companies will provide you with full medical coverage while you're working on board. Um, for any any first timer onto cruise ships, I think when you look at your salary slip at the end of the month mm. and you realize what you get to take home, mm. your living expenses on board are really minimal. And so that allows you to really harness the ability to save tremendously. Mm. And that is mm. a, a, a key, key benefit of what we experience as a pay, as opposed to people who are working back home mm -hmm. and the expenses that they may face there. Mm -hmm. And so we really get the opportunity to maximize the opportunity to put funds away uh, for greater purpose at, at a later stage. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for that. I think um, we've shared quite um, enough information for anybody that's looking to you know either start off or build their career. Now, I'd like us to move on to the next question. Um, building up on what we've just discussed, what do you think, from your experience, are some of the key things that recruiters look for, especially in waiters' roles? I could mention a couple of things, and I will touch base on, on a few of them. But uh, having dealt with a lot of recruiters in my life in terms of different job roles that I've applied for the single-handedly most important factor of all uh, for cruise ships specifically is personality uh, skill sets can be taught education can be taught um, specific workplace policies and procedures can be taught personality depicts who you are as a person and it will showcase so much about who you are if you bring that across in any interview being yourself being genuine having a sense of humor uh, keeping yourself light is always going to go far in capturing the attention of who is on the other side of that phone call or video call mm. um, so I don't think it always depends so much as what people have that presumption. It's all about the education or it's all about the work experience. Mm. Of course, that mm. does add mm. to it and it will be one of the factors. However, being confident in knowing who you are, where you're from and what you have to bring to the organization will showcase so much about who you are that they'll want follow up questions. And so that interview may end up taking longer and longer mm. uh, and that only happens if you show a openness and, and a genuineness to the recruiter it's not uh, it's not you know the old times anymore this is the new world where showing who you are being proud of who you are being proud of your religion and your culture and your heritage and showcasing that in in a in the right way in a delicate way can really add to building up who you are and building rapport for the kind of person that you'll be on board mm -hmm. and that's what they're trying to understand mm -hmm. they recruiters want to know will your personality profile fit with the dynamic that is working on cruise ships working with a variety of nationalities working with a variety of different leadership styles they want to know 
when they put you in in predicaments and situations or hardships how will you manage it what will your response be what will your reaction be and so they're posing questions like this in an interview in order to understand and give insight to the manager or the leader of that organization and really understand how will that person manage each of those situations that they face each day so personality for an interview is the most single-handed important factor for me um, and thereafter it's been short concise making sure that the correct information is there um, it is about delving into what makes you unique standing out from the crowd um, specific skill sets that not everybody may have something that you think could really highlight you to stand out from the crowd is what you want to highlight that's the key area in distinguishing yourself from others making yourself so needed that they want you you know you want you want you want them to make you uh, accept their offer without without the interview going any further um, and so looking at your CV giving it to others getting others to ask you interview questions you know role play uh, especially when some people are nervous for video calls or for phone calls I always find that role playing and getting them to ask you hard questions or questions that you may not expect um, don't be afraid to take a second you don't have to respond to every question with immediate timing you know you can ex explain to the recruiter would you mind to give me a second I just want to gather my thoughts uh, you know because sometimes the nervousness will block out what you actually want to say because the adrenaline rush that's going through your system might um, make you want to answer something that's actually not what you wanted to say <laughs> and that's also okay you know yeah. it's also okay to make mistakes um, yeah. and to to have a little bit of understanding in yourself the pressure will be there there's not one person I think that goes in into an interview and isn't nervous uh, that will always be the case. Mm -hmm. However, I think the role playing and making sure that you're confident with your CV, you know, I, I had various techniques of how I always go into an interview, um, but I always keep sticky notes behind the camera. I keep sticky notes that I write <laughs> down before the interview, and on those sticky notes, it's some of them are confidence boosting statements. Mm -hmm. to make myself feel good about who I am. Uh, some of them are key attributes that I want to mention, whether that be certain skill sets, whether it be education, uh, whether it's various experiences. I want to remind myself of that so that if I get into the moment and I slips my mind, mm -hmm. that I can kind of look towards the camera and I still have their eye contact, but I can take note of what else I wanted to remember. So sticky notes helped me a lot with that. and. Um, the exact same thing of what I mentioned earlier in, in this was grooming and, and personal presentation. I love to get dressed as if that interview is happening in front of me. Mm -hmm. So whether it's on a Skype call, whether it's on a video call, I dress appropriately. I want to feel like a million bucks. I want to dress like the man who's on Wall Street mm -hmm. going for that job interview because it will always in turn make me feel better and more confident. And so regardless of the question that comes at me, I know that I've done all of the foundation hard work to bring myself to this interview and that regardless of which question they ask me, uh, that I'll be ready for it. Wow, um, that's a handful. <laughs> <laughs> and, we're, here, um, we're here to give as much as what we can today, Wendy. That's That's the point. Absolutely, and I hope you guys are taking those notes. Like I said, drop them in the comments. This is our religion here. Uh, mention where you're watching from. Again, that way we can, you know, um, tailor make our content to best suit um, you. Now, again, guys, another thing I just want to add up here is that um, if there's a department or maybe there's another manager possibly that you want me guys to get through, I'll try my best. I'm not promising anything. Mention it also in the comments. I'll see what I can do. Now, Greg, um, one thing that really um, struck out from what you've just said um, to me right here with that question which was answered is the fact that, and it's something I've been talking about, cruise ships are different. 
and we've talked about you know um, how people can get entry level positions e.g. in your department waiters mm -hmm. people have this mindset of thinking that you need a degree you need a certificate you need a qualification of course there are general requirements which I'll cover in a lot of my other videos we're not gonna go into that today but specifically to a certain department because we're busy with food and beverage here um, I've shared with people that you don't even need a certification as long as you implement what Greg has been sh uh, sharing with us today you can get a shot and I see many people reaching out through um, to me via the comments social media in my emails I look at the questions that they send in their CVs if they're sending in CVs for reviews and I can see that this person or certain person has so much that they can offer but they're struggling with, position, uh, with positioning themselves into, example, a way that the recruiter or agency can be able to say, hey, I want to hire this person. And most of them you've covered. Mm -hmm. So guys, please forget the thing about education. As you've said um, and mentioned, it can be beneficial, but I want to put it here um, live to everybody that it is not needed. Although there are some technical departments that will require you understand those certifications but in covering entry-level positions because a lot of people want entry-level positions you do not need those things now could you please tell us a little bit about what are some of the common mistakes that you see people making either on an interview or maybe on the job itself <laughs> yeah i would say one day it's let, let's start from the interview mm. uh when you're taking the, the the steps that i just mentioned about making sure that you're prepared making sure that you know you set yourself up for success mm. alleviates those problems <clears throat> but the one thing that i note that i can give as a helpful tip is answer the question in hand and keep it to that mm. Mm. As an example, if the recruiter asks you, tell me about yourself, where have you worked before? Keep it short and concise. Mention the location, the dates worked, or how long you worked with them, and what your responsibilities were in the job. Keep it short, mm. keep it sweet, mm. keep it concise. Mm. The recruiter is making notes about you during that interview, they're not going to write down the full essay that you tell them. Mm. So if you keeping it short and sweet, they're writing down the short and sweet. Mm. So it's very clear and easy for them to go back and look over that interview and make easy, quick bullet point notes about who you are, where you were, what you have to offer, what's your experience, what do you bring to the table. So don't further a easy question by continuing to talk about the same topic be short be concise make your point across and then go silent and wait for the next question if they have any further clarification that they need from you they will ask if they feel like you didn't give enough to answer that question they will follow up with another question um, but what you don't want to do is for them to be sitting on the other side of the call uh, and anxiously trying to get to the next question because you've only got a select set of time frame for that interview and you can't be there for three hours, you know, learning about the whole backstory. So um, as much as what you want to answer, keep your CV in the same way. Make sure that even on a daily basis, this is a similar issue, but when you're communicating, <laughs> when you're setting uh, objectives to get done, yeah. it's short clear and concise um, so I would say the mistake is that some people utilize verbiage in the incorrect way by talking about the topic then as opposed to discussing it in very short quick brief inserts that actually gets the message passed across a lot quicker right. so um, I would say a similar mistake that people can make when it comes to interviews is the lack of confidence in right. themselves right. Uh, will end up meaning that they end up fumbling on, on a simple question or even on a hard, harder question but it's the ability of, of, of trusting the process trusting that you're giving it 100 mm. percent 
confidence will allow you to answer those questions in in a way that will respond to the recruiter and so if you don't trust the process if you doubt yourself if you don't think like you're gonna get it because of previous submissions or requests not following through you have to walk into every single new interview as if it's a brand new day with a brand new interview and as if you're gonna give it 100 percent um, so you've got to dust yourself off if you've had 10 declines or 10 denials you get back up you dust yourself off and you give the next interview the exact same 100 percent um, you can't let it beat you down you've got to build yourself back up dust yourself off and you've got to go and give it 100 percent again because the company that does notice you and will find reason for your personality and your skill set in their organization will be wanting you to have given it 100 percent that day um, and so Confidence is king when it comes to that. Wow. I hope you guys, again, are taking notes. Greg is beating fire. <laughs> <laughs> I myself, I'm trying to wrap my head around and, you know, keep track of what you're saying. There's so much, honestly, genuinely now, um, besides, you know, um, the jokes. There's so much that you are giving and sharing that I think can benefit everybody else um, out there who is looking into stepping into this. Now, let's get one step a little bit deeper. And I know we've shared a lot, but let's pinpoint because I want to know from you, Greg, I mean, somebody who's done it before, you hearing it, guys, straight from the horse's mouth, somebody who's actually walked the talk, not someone who's talking about something they learned somewhere, you understand? And you are mentioning key things, you know, you talked about um, one golden question um, that I usually share. I've shared, you know, tips about acing interviews. Mm -hmm. I recently made a video about waiters, how they can, you know, um, ace the interviews. Previously before that, I shared um, general, you know, about cruise ships. And the one question uh, that always I put forward or front or ahead of everything else is what I'd like to call the golden question tell me about yourself and you've just wrapped it in a way that resonates with what i've shared that keep it short and concise don't tell stories about your ex what um you know in your marriage or previous life you've you've done keep it short and concise again you've heard it guys from him the recruiter is taking notes building up a profile about who you are what makes you stand out to be able to land that job because at the end of the day let's be honest they want what you can contribute to the company mm -hmm. they're not going to hire this is not a business of auntie uncle cousins and sisters mm -hmm. it's a business that we are running guests are paying especially on this super yard that we work on i'm so privileged you know to be led by you you understand guests pay an enormous amount of money to be here so the expectations are high and then we want people who can contribute and make a difference now getting back to our question what is the one advice if you can sum it up that you can give to someone who's starting out in this process wanting to either start off as a waiter or coming in as a manager or maybe just skyrocket the career of course you've mentioned things um, that I think are helpful that it's going to take determination sometimes it might happen that you might not get exactly the position that you want because we know um, that cruise ship operation is different from anything else especially if you've only worked at land and you haven't had cruise ship experience before it's going to be difficult to come in as directly a manager but what is it that one thing that you can give people to be able to take away from you know um, preparing for everything that we've just discussed um, be willing and be ready to have the time of your life there is a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication a lot of sacrifice and a lot of reward working on cruise ships gives and takes it gives so much to the abundance of experiences the people you will meet, where you will go, the places you'll explore. 
and what it will take is hard work, grit, and determination <clears throat> to consistently show up every single day and continue to do your absolute best. Mm -hmm. um, the recruiter is there to decipher, do you have what it takes to, to survive the requirements of a cruise ship? And the reason being is that to be away from family can be challenging, you know, especially loved ones, aunties, uncles, as you said, um, and friends and family and, and special celebrations. Um, however, what you get in return is exactly what I was just saying. You get this plethora of phenomenal experiences and stories that shape who you are. And so you've got to put the mindset and you've got to get yourself into a position where when that opportunity knocks and you ace that interview based on all of one of these amazing tips and tricks in all of these <laughs> other videos i would say go and do the research watch these useful videos make yourself open to understand and learn as much as what you can so that when the opportunity strikes the process moves fast mm -hmm. i mean you know that that if one day you can be at home and within a couple of weeks if you get the job you're on board and so you've got to be prepared as if this could turn and happen within a, in a short space of time but it could also take a little longer and so i mentioned patience earlier and i'm still getting to terms with patience myself <laughs> patience is, is a virtue is a virtue that we will continue to learn Absolutely. however um nailing the interview is one making sure that you are, are ready for the opportunity is another um and the willingness the hunger the hunger to 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 succeed should be there every single day you know and so i think what sets us apart is all of those skill sets being there and being worked on every single day mm. you know mm. constant growth constant learning um, even in the process of while you're waiting you know to hear back from a recruiter or while you're looking at other job roles that is still a period of time that is can be filled with learning and growth and education and opportunities and experiences so i think what will set you out from the crowd like i said utilize your personality showcase that to the recruiter so that they recommend you to the cruise line because if they do that would normally result in a second interview and that would be with the line manager or with the head of the department or any of those um, roles and that's when they would go into specifics yeah. that's when they want to know when you worked at your previous employer what did you do on a day-to-day -day basis what kind of skill sets did they require from you so in terms of uh, making yourself ready for the recruiter there will be a completely different set of expectations for the second round and and moving on but showcase who you are be proud of it mention the unique experiences that you've had in your life so far in a way that shows what you can bring to the table mm -hmm. that you can add to their organization that you can add to something that will only by benefit them <coughs> by having them on their team mm -hmm. wow thank you thank you craig and like always i'm going to keep repeating this guys make sure you are taking notes drop them in the comments again i'm going to try my best you know to get greg to answer all your questions maybe there's a burning question that you have that i haven't asked or will not ask um of course i'm not going to know what it is specifically that you want to know this is the time and opportunity to be able to utilize this platform he's willing to do that and share his knowledge and experiences to make sure that you can be able to land your dream job and experience what you experience and make your dreams come true because it does not end here whether you want to make cruise ship your long time you know career or it's just a stepping stone to something or you just want to you know get away and uh, explore places like we do see the world meet incredible people meet lovely guests you know immerse yourself into what the world has to offer because you know what um wherever you come from that's not where life ends mm -hmm. you understand there's so much more that you can expect there's so much more that life can give you 
and I really want you know to bring this in this session even if I cannot like I said make sure you drop your questions in the comments and we will attend them now Greg please tell us what would somebody or what would you recommend that someone focus on in the first contract that will set them apart now they've went through the interview they've got in the job it does not end there coming on a cruise ship stepping into you know another different let's say environment comes with challenges mm -hmm. what would you recommend that somebody um, who's just starting out do that will set them apart especially if they're looking to advance and grow in the career I think you know the most important part as soon as you do step onto a new vessel or join a new company for the first time is aligning yourself with similar like-minded individuals sets you up for success. Your vibe attracts your tribe is a saying that I always understood and it results in you being surrounded by people who have the same goals and the same mindset. In your first contract on board, you want to be around a supportive group or supportive individuals who want to help you adjust and settle in I want to show you and guide you the way that would make that transitional phase as easy as possible. Mm. Um, you want to feel and make this as much like home as what it would be as if you were on land at your home. Mm -hmm. um, and so finding the right people, making sure that your cabin is comfortable and welcoming and a place of refuge and rest mm -hmm. will give you all the tools you need to show up. Uh, and make yourself known. Introduce yourself to everybody. Remind everybody about who you are and where you're from. Reintroduce yourself every other day that you need to. You know, make yourself visible. Make sure that people know your name and who you are because you've introduced yourself uh, and show up with that same personality that you showed in the interview. Bring that every single day because this will be the opportunity to once again stand up from the crowd there may be others who might start at the same time as you you know and and join on that same company for their first time as well and so i think surrounding yourself with the right people doing all the objectives setting goals that will really make you feel like that transitional phase is gonna fly by you know and before you know it that first contract is done and dusted yeah. Um, but you yeah. want to make sure that that is all got to work in sync and, and make sure you're surrounding yourself with the right people, having a good cabin, taking good care of yourself and your mental, your mental health, you know, it's checking in with family and loved ones while you're on break. It's making sure you're eating good food and going to rest or going outdoors, going for a walk. Um, all of these things will help that first contract really uh, ease the pressure of what you had in your mind and the expectations you put on yourself and, and getting you through that contract successfully. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Greg, for sharing those valuable insights. I myself, I'm not going to lie about it. First contract, it's very challenging, especially transitioning mm -hmm. from land to cruise ships. I myself, I don't want to lie, my first contract, I remember, I was ready to quit my very first month no jokes you know um but something kept me or something you know um really resonated with me that i had to go within deeply and remind myself why am i here do i really want to pay for my flight ticket going back home <laughs> do i really want to tell you know my, my my daughter my loved ones i couldn't make it do i want to be a failure you mm -hmm. understand to the people that really care about me, to the people that I promised um, when I left that, you know what, I'm going there to change situations and things for you, mm -hmm. you understand? So it's really important that people can understand and get the helpful tips and advice. And guys, by all means, socialize with other people. It's very important to look after yourself, especially your mental health, because that is what's going to keep you going, you know, especially getting through that first contract. Now, please tell us what are some of the challenges that people don't know about being in your position as a restaurant manager aboard the Christian? Um, I would say human interaction, people 
our power. To be a restaurant manager on board requires you to, we touched base on it earlier, the emotional intelligence, yeah. but there will be unique situations that you will face and that could be from a complaint, dealing with a difficult or challenging guest. Um, it could be dealing with interactions between crew members that need to be resolved. Um, it could be a crew member seeking advice and support on a personal problem and making sure that the lines are drawn at all times between professional and personal time. Um, you have to show up each day with that same openness because you don't know what challenge may come your way that day and you may not even have the solution in the moment um, but you've got to take those foundation blocks of learning and working with people and, and being on land or being on other cruise lines, working in the airlines, it, it doesn't matter. Each, each of those experiences or wherever you're coming from helps to shape and mold the way that you will tackle each challenge. Um, so I would say, for me, my job role is constantly filled with the challenges of people mm. uh, from guests and from crew. And so it's my job to make sure that I'm there with as much of the answers as I have possible. And if I don't have the answer or I don't have the response, that I go out and I search for what it is and I go back and I follow up. Um, because I wanna make sure that regardless of whatever issue may arise within my team or an issue that could arise with the guest, that I am willing to do whatever it takes to get the best solution possible for them. And, and so I would say, be open to understanding that you and your crew, the guests even themselves, may bump their heads along the way. Um, being humble to understand that and allowing the opportunity to learn and grow from that is also a challenge because it requires patience. Absolutely. It requires <laughs> patience. Um, and you've got to allow the crew member or you know, you've got to allow these situations sometimes to play themselves on. You, as the restaurant manager, can't coddle and, and cover up. It doesn't allow any growth within the individual crew member themselves. So mm -hmm. uh, be there to support and to guide, but you've got to make sure that they have the ability to, to learn and bump their head and grow from that experience themselves. Well, wow, thank you once again, Greg. And um, we've heard by now about pretty much uh, a summary of your journey, what it takes for someone uh, that is on a starting position, people have dreams and aspirations, what it is that they can sort of navigate, what are some of the things that they can sort of, let me say, avoid to fast track the process. And I think now it's time that we tell the viewers on the flip side, what are some of the most rewarding things about your job being you know on board cruise ships uh yeah i mean firstly i'm going on my third passport and i'm 30 years old come on say third, that again third passport uh that's volume one, two three. volume <laughs> third passport uh and that's just on the basis of the amount of travel i've done in eight years of being on cruise ships um that is a tremendous amount for most and it means that if I had to look at the map of the world and the amount of places I've traveled to, I've ticked off a tremendous amount. Mm. And that was always one of the driving forces for me in cruise ships, uh, was the abundance of travel uh, to not necessarily only well-known locations and, and countries, but to really remote, unique destinations that not many get the opportunity to. So. That is a, is a huge, huge, huge benefit for me in terms of the exposure um, and what I see, what I experience, the interactions that I have with people uh, from all these various countries and locations. It, it's so rewarding to me in terms of what I, what I, what I get from them and, 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 what, and what they get from me. You know, there's a, a, mutual, a mutual gifting of, of experiences and shared interactions that it really brings warmth and, and light to you to your soul it just does you you walk away feeling like you 
gain something and, and that's tremendous. Um, but also the, the people that you meet along the way. Uh, cruise ships become, and, and, the, and the people who work on cruise ships become your family. You know, they are your family on the oceans. And uh, I can tell you regardless of whether you think you will see those people again or not after that one contract, mm. you will. <laughs> you, you will and you'll meet them in the most remote locations sometimes or you'll meet them at their house uh, for a lunch and a dinner um, but the people stick with you and you stick with them because each and every single day that you're showing up and giving it your all even when it's maybe not the easy day or, or it's the hard challenging day those people may have those days too but you go through that together and those people offer you the support and the guidance and that builds a bond that is as tight as the one that you have with your own family and friends back home mm. and so those people make it really rewarding because they see you go through that journey and you see them uh and so that for me is uh, is just there's a lot more i could be here forever telling you what are the benefits and, and the rewards but i would say the abundance of travel and the incredible people that I meet along the way, uh, yeah, and the good food, of course. <laughs> the good food, the good food is always the one. Uh, yeah, who who doesn't enjoy that? So, yeah. Uh, but you will see that for each person, there's something else that you will gain from it. You know, that will just be the bare minimum. There's so much more to to add on to that. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know, I I'm really impressed, and given you know your age. Um, with what you have achieved, you know, not just the travels, but in terms of the growth, in terms of your intellectual, um, let me say, uh, kind of mindset, um, the property that you own about yourself, you understand, that you cannot or nobody can duplicate into who you've molded yourself to be, you understand, I know I, I talk to people um, on rare occasions, but I've got people reaching out to me that are in their forties, that are in their fifties, that want to begin this, you know, um, incredible journey. And the stories that they tell me, sometimes I'm like, you know what? I, am I feel empathy for them, but I know that it's never too late. Mm -hmm. So for someone who, um, who's your age, who has done and achieved the things that you have, I would say kudos and you know big ups to that i hope that today people are really learning a lot and uh, getting some valuable insights i myself am one person that you know i've been motivated by the travels you know and i've shared it a lot throughout my channel throughout my social media some of the benefits that people can get not just the financial side you know mm -hmm. because as much as that is important but building a family away from your family and connections and networking that could open up to greater things you know to yourself because you never know where life would take you mm -hmm. we might be sitting here today and one day we might be business partners mm -hmm. who knows you understand so those kind of things and the relationship that uh, the relationships that you mold along the ways with people goes a really long way and it's really important to make sure that you yourself nature those relationships there's no other opportunity i know of um you know that can give you all of those benefits that we've just highlighted today mm -hmm. so i really wanna you know um, round up to this video there's a couple of things that i think we could cover but looking at the time i don't really want to make this too long i can see we are getting to um the end of our you know planned time and there are things that I just want to run through. You can answer one or two if you want to, mm -hmm. but these are things that really, um, you know, struck to me and I think the viewers can benefit from. Guys, the first thing that you talked about was emotional intelligence. You know, that is not a skill anyone can teach you, you understand? It's a skill that life molds you into becoming. And if you don't understand what that means and how you can acquire that skill, because it's not something you can learn off a textbook. It's not something you can study at varsity or college or high school. It's something that you have to learn. It's life teaching you. 
and for me that is so much important and I myself I'm still in the growth phase and I've grown so much into that and I think our viewers can benefit a lot if they can focus on that part also another thing that really highlighted this conversation that we are having today is the power of mistakes I'm one person that believes that life teaches us through mistakes of course we cannot accept mistakes happening often you know mm -hmm. you repeating the same things over and over again but I think there's so much that people can learn from making mistakes and at times people are afraid to make mistakes you understand I am an advocate to saying make the mistakes even to my own kids I tell them make the mistakes make sure you learn don't repeat them because if you repeat the same mistakes it, it's telling me you haven't learned mm -hmm. you understand so it's okay I'm not saying it's wrong but it could be a cost if you could um, if you repeat the same mistakes to yourself to the company and you know setting goals mm -hmm. another thing that you know really resonated with me today um, I have in my own process that I take people through about setting goals maybe not on this video maybe on upcoming videos I'll be sharing that but you've shared a little bit about how you are motivated because you know goals give us direction mm -hmm. let's be honest um, the hunger to succeed how we work you know in multicultural environments and how somebody can navigate themselves you know in this challenging environment you mentioned I remember earlier on um, something about the communication because the way that you speak to someone or the speed that you used to speak could be misinterpreted if I can put it in that yeah. way you understand those are some key takeaways that I think you guys can be you know taking along today and remembering teamwork guys we all have the same goal as you've just said we might be 10 20 100 different departments on board but believe me I know between us one in our department in food and beverage one outlet runs to the another for something I give you know I always have the openness of giving because I know that tomorrow I'm I'm gonna be the one going to the same person mm -hmm. that has given me but if you are someone that is not open to that Think about how people would respond to you when you need something and I think it's a really key takeaway so also another thing that we really didn't go deep about is the different salary range mm -hmm. but I think you guys can leave comments about that because of the time factors otherwise like I said feel free if you wanted to touch base on that as well um, we talked about the skill set and we highlighted that it's not only the education you understand there are people skills there are soft skills that we have mentioned that comes through your personality it's again not something that you can learn anywhere else but it is something that can help you at home to build yourself to build your character that can enhance your journey of working on a cruise ship now we also um there's something that really um there's something that really stuck out for me that you mentioned aligning yourself with people of you know a similar mindset because as the saying goes birds of the same feathers flock together mm -hmm. you understand and that is just about what i wanted to kind of give a recap on what we've just touched base on to today so i really want to give you the opportunity greg if you think there's something from what i've just covered you want to emphasize on or there's something you yourself want to add to the viewers mm -hmm. as a bonus please feel free to go over that now um one day i think i think you know we've covered a lot today and for sure there may still be some questions that may get posed um i think be be happy for the opportunities that come around with cruise ships um be willing to start at the bottom and work your way up uh the length of time that it takes to start from the bottom and work your way up varies again from from company to company mm -hmm. but that rate of progression can happen extraordinarily fast if you show up every single day if you give a hundred percent of yourself every day if you're continually improving and learning and teaching yourself something new each day that rate of progression can run at the same speed at which you apply that to yourself um, there is so much opportunity and so much joy to be able to have these opportunities um, don't stop trying for the opportunity to get on board a ship 
I think even if you get one no or two no's or three no's, mm. that doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't consider this as an option. Mm. Continue, you know, continue to fight for it and put that out into the universe and the universe will, re will respond. Um, believe me, I've had many, many applications in my career denied and no follow-up calls or no responses. Uh, dust yourself back up and, mm. uh, and mm. get back up on the horse and carry on trying. Um, and once you're on board, find, find your rhythm, find your routine. Don't apply too much pressure to yourself to try and figure that out in your first week on board. It will take time. It is a different way of living and adjustment periods are needed. Uh, the transition will happen at, at its pace. Um, but again, if, if there's any other further questions, uh, when it comes to the salaries, I mean, again, I can't touch base with it too much. Uh, just in terms of, of what I what I know and what I've experienced um, but there are companies that are a little more open and freely exposed in what their salary bandwidth is um, and you could do more research on that I guess if you're looking at one specific company but Absolutely. I think that regardless of whichever country you come from wherever you're from the salaries on cruise ships are always extraordinarily appealing just understand what the job role is and the expectation that is going to be set for you if you do that and you walk in here with an open and wholehearted mind you can make anything happen from this and every opportunity could skyrocket from here wow 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 um currently at our time zone we are sailing in indonesia um it's just hit past midnight and Greg, I really, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you for making this possible. I know we've been planning this um, for quite some time now. And, you know, from your busy schedule, finding the time to be able to make this possible. You know, thanks to you guys watching as well. And I hope you can find some more gratitude and help me thank Greg for being here because he's a really busy man. He goes through a lot during his day. And if just spent over an hour sitting here with us, giving you tips, guys, and actionable, you know, um, information. And I hope that you benefited and this interview has helped you guys in one way um, or the other. And like I said, please, if you still have any further questions, make sure that you drop them in the comments. I'll chase him around if I have to, to answer the questions. I can't promise every question will get answered, but I can, you know, assure you that I will make sure that he responds to any questions that you guys have personally and with that being said if you really enjoyed today's interview make sure guys that you know what you join us in this incredible community share this video with someone that you think might benefit hit that like button you know and of course subscribe to our channel to get more exciting content like this and with that being said like always thank you for joining me here today I hope this was valuable. I've really enjoyed it and I hope that you can enjoy it as much as we've both did today. Like always, this is Wandi Lesamba and signing off. Until the next one, goodbye, my friend. Whew. Thank you, Greg. Thank of you, course, Greg. Baba. I really, that really was good, yeah.